y'all. If this is your first time here, I'm just going to sit and have a little ramble about tarot and one of the ways that I feel like I use it on a consistent basis. And if you like kind of rambly, more philosophical ideas rather than a uh, like how-to video, um, this one might be good for you. So let me know in the comments what you think and I can make more of these as we go. This time in 2018, I was finishing up my last week of my first year teaching and I was worn out. I was so ready for graduation. I had reached a point somewhere in the year where I had stopped really doing even minimal kind of self-care stuff. And I definitely had not put on any makeup in weeks, possibly even months at this point. But graduation is a special occasion. And so it was worth the time to sit down and really do my makeup and do my hair because, you know, you're going to be taking a lot of photos and stuff. So. so I did a quick makeup look and my hair and I looked so good. My hair was so shiny. My makeup was popping. My jawline existed. It was incredible. I looked amazing. And so I did what anybody would do and I pulled my phone out in this very bathroom and I took a selfie. And in that selfie, I really, I thought I looked fierce. I thought I looked so good. I made it my profile picture for every social media platform in existence <laughs> because it really felt like it was the first good picture of me in so long. And when I posted it on Instagram, I got so many comments about how great my hair looked, how pretty I was, blah, blah, blah. I was feeling it. And then eventually things changed, probably my hair. And I needed to change my profile picture up. So what I changed my profile picture and I just kind of forgot about that graduation day photo that I took. And Google, you know Google, Google, she helpfully sent me a little reminder, you know, five years ago today. And I looked at that photo <laughs> and all I wanted to do was give her a hug because she looked so tired. Even with all the makeup on, even with the perfect hair, even with the actual jawline, she looked so tired and worn out. And I remembered I took that photo because it was the first time I had done my makeup in so long. And now I make a point out of doing my makeup every morning because where I used to think of it as something to do when you have extra time or if it's a special occasion, I now think of it as being able to do something I enjoy for myself before I leave the house every day. It also just gets me in the right mindset that like, no, I don't look schlubby. I am a little judged up and it's because I'm going to be around other people all day. I'm going to be giving other people my energy all day and I want to show up for that. And I think tarot is like that. I think something that tarot can do for us is be a window to our future self. Because I didn't just think about wanting to go back in time and hug that old version of myself who was so anxious she was breaking out into hives every month and couldn't figure out why she was breaking out into hives and the doctors were just like, have you changed your laundry detergent? No, it ended up, it was, it was stress. And so, yeah, I was thinking back 
at that person in the photo who was so tired, who finally took time for herself on graduation day and was amazed with the results. But I was also thinking about my future self and how years down the line, there is already another version of me who is reaching back and trying to give me a hug right now. Because whatever thing is making me anxious, she already knows that I should have just trusted myself. I should have just trusted that I know what to do when situations come up. And so that thing that I'm ruminating about, thinking about it, catastrophizing it, is not helping me in any way. I also recently got one of those helpful Google things. It said nine years ago today. And it was a photo of me and two of the people in my religious studies cohort. When I went back to school, I was already an adult. I had no idea what I was gonna major in. I assumed I would major in English because those were the kinds of classes I enjoyed when I was in high school. And while I was in school, I realized that nobody else really cared about the English classes, even the English majors. And it was really frustrating because I was kind of looking for a tribe of people who were interested in the same things I was and passionate about the same things I was. And it's kind of hard to find that here. So the people in the English department that I was taking those classes with were not satisfying that need. And then I took a class on Buddhism and I just kind of never looked back. And so I changed my major to religious studies. And I was looking at this photo from nine years ago and it was me and two other people from my program and I cannot remember their names. And I felt so close to them in the moment. And then as soon as we graduated, we completely lost touch. But that moment of graduating from college and getting a bachelor's degree was a huge big deal for me. And the people who were there for it were really important. But my current version of myself looks back on that and I can't even remember the names of the people I shared that experience with. So there is a future version of me out there. And I think tarot is a way to access that future version. And that's what I think it is. I think that there's a lot of different approaches to tarot. I made a video about that, I'll link it below. But I think that one of the ways we can approach tarot is as an opportunity to access this wisdom that we already have. Because all of these versions of ourselves, huh, all of these versions of ourself currently exist all at the same time. And tarot could be a window into accessing those versions. It can be a window to gaining wisdom from the version of ourself um, that knows better, that's already learned, that um, has kind of put away the things that aren't really important and could kind of say to us, you know, right now this feels so emotional, but in a couple years, you're not even gonna remember this person's name. I hate pulling my hair back like this because I have a widow's peak. I always knew I had a widow's peak, but I never really thought anything of it. It was just the center of my hairline. And then one day when I was working at Target, one of the managers at Target pointed it out and called it an Eddie Munster. Oh, I didn't know Allie had an Eddie Munster. And I stopped pulling my hair back because of that, <laughs> because of that, because of that comment. And I still don't really like pulling my hair back because it exposes this thing that somebody else made me feel self-conscious about that I had never th given any thought of before. And you know what? I remember feeling ashamed all of a sudden of something that 
I had never felt ashamed of before. And I've been letting that decide <laughs> how I do my hair for so long now. And I don't even remember the name of the guy who said it. In the moment, this stuff feels so emotional. Why, why continue carrying it with you if you're not even gonna remember the guy's name? Sometimes I feel really insecure about talking about tarot because for one, I live in the Bible Belt. And so they call the tarot cards devil cards here. Are them, are them those devil cards? <laughs> Uh, it's also just difficult, like, it was difficult being a religious studies major and telling people that you were, ma I was majoring in religious studies. It kind of immediately turns people off. And I think it's because we are so used to having a certain flavor of Christianity jammed down our throats down here. And so it makes discussion of certain things really difficult. But uh, we did Secret Santa at our school this year. We, we do it every year and they always give out like a little worksheet that you can fill out. And there's one of the things that it asks is like what your hobbies are. And I'd never written tarot down as a hobby, but I did this time. Because like the people who are gonna be important later on, it's fine. They'll either they'll get it or they'll leave it alone. You know what I mean? Oh. I got a really kind secret Santa. They got me a uh, a piss yellow version of the Rider Waite Smith and a pretty little uh, thing to put on my altar that holds tarot cards. They they spent more than they should have as secret Santa. And I was so grateful for it, not because I needed that tarot deck or anything, but it was just like nice to know that if I talked about something that's important to me, I wouldn't immediately get slapped down. But how much does their opinion really matter? How much should I really let that bother me? And I think my future self would tell me, this person is not part of your tribe. They're not they're not going to be around forever. At some point, somebody like that, you're going to forget their name. I love that there's so many different approaches to tarot. There's so many different ways to use it and think about it and look at it. And this is a way that I've been um, experimenting with for a long time, of like thinking about it as giving my future self who has more wisdom and hindsight the opportunity to reach back through time and to tell me everything's going to be okay <laughs> like you don't need to be anxious about this thing and it's really helped and it's not how I read every single time but I think that as far as approaches to tarot go that would probably be my default answer it's an opportunity to check in with myself, all versions of myself, the version of myself currently in the past, in the future, the version of myself that works as a teacher, the version of myself that continues to live as a student, all of these different facets of being alive and being human that we live through every day. The tarot gives me an opportunity to work with all of those parts and even possibly bring some of them into unity with themselves or, or a sense of harmony beyond just the multiple roles that we play in our everyday lives. That's how I think about it, at least some of the time. I still occasionally get that uh, that selfie. It pops up every once in a while. And I always think back to that first time it popped up and I thought, she looks so tired. You at your best five years ago, I hope that it's not your best today.
That's the goal, right? To be better today than you were before. And so whatever version of yourself pops up from your past, I hope you've seen a lot of improvement between who you were then and who you are now. I wonder what I'm going to call this video. Future self. What should I title this video? You know stuff. I think graduation as like this big rite of passage. It doesn't have to be something you do one time or to earn a degree or, you know, at the end of a lot of hard work doing something standardized like school. You can think of graduation in a lot of different ways. I have graduated from allowing myself to feel burnt out in a way that, I mean, I've felt just absolutely out of control of my emotions and my day-to-day -day activities because I was so anxious about work because I just could never let it go when I got home. It was just always on my mind. And I feel like I have graduated from that over the course of the last mm, two years is when I started working on that. I read a book called Burnout and it was all about the stress cycle and how like we needed the stress cycle when we were under constant threat by predators, but we don't need <clears throat> our bodies to react in that way to chronic stress that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But since our bodies are still primed to deal with stress in that way, like everything that happens is a lion chasing us. We never reach a point where we tell ourselves it's okay and we don't have to be stressed about that anymore. And so we just kind of carry that stress with us always. That's why I was breaking out into hives for a few years um, at the beginning of my teaching career was because I just could not let go of the stressful events of the day and my body started to treat the chemicals that were raging through it um, like it was an enemy it needed to attack. And it took a lot of work and some of the stuff that I needed to do in order to push through that and stop, stop the stress cycle um, every day. It was stuff that I didn't necessarily want to do or change, but it took a while, but I did it. I did it over a period of time and now I feel a lot more in control of not just how I feel but like emotionally but also the everyday events in my life. I feel like I'm in a lot more control with that as well. And tarot was one of the things that was a big part of being able to keep up with how I felt and make progress towards feeling better. So it's a tool. They are basically whatever you need them to be in the moment. And for me, it's been an amazing self-help tool that I've been into for many years and probably will never let go of because it's done so much for me. So this is a pretty basic look. I think it looks all right though. Uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing me ramble. If you would like more of those, they're coming. You can't stop me. I'll see you next time. Bye.